What is going on everyone? My name is Extreme Serial and welcome to this Monster Hunter Rise Advanced Great Sword Tips and Tricks tutorial video. In this video, I will be further elaborating on mechanics of the Great Sword to help you advance your Great Sword play, to help you understand your weapon better, and so you can be well on your way to becoming a Great Sword Master, or as I like to say, a great Great Sword player. It is important to note that in this video, I will assume you have a basic understanding of the greatsword, its moves and combos, and basic mechanics behind the weapon. If you do not, Eric's Gaming has posted a greatsword tutorial for Monster Hunter Rise that covers all of this material. I will put it in the description below. So if you are a newer player, new to the greatsword, or even if you are a veteran player, but just not familiar with the new moves and additions added in Monster Hunter Rise, go check out that video, then come back to this one. If you're still with me, I'm going to assume you know what you're talking about when it comes to the basics of the Greatsword, and we are going to be moving forward. Before I get started with the tips and tricks, I'd like to go over some terms to know so that I can better communicate my points to you and we can all be on the same page. First of all, let's talk about your main attacks on the greatsword. I am going to call those your slash attacks. You have your first slash, your second slash, and you have your third slash. Now, your third slash can be either the true charge slash or the rage slash, but just because we have charges and three levels of charge and you have three main slashes, I wanted to make that difference so we're all on the same page. So just to go over one more time, your charge levels, I will call them your charge level. So you have level one, level two, and level three charge. You also have your overcharge state, where if you charge past level three, it goes into an overcharge state. And you have your slashes in tiers, right? You have your first slash, your second slash, and your third slash, which is either going to be a true charge slash or a rage slash. I will make sure to specify in the video if I'm talking about one of them specifically. The next term I will be using frequently in this video is Hyper Armor. Hyper Armor is a state achieved through certain moves from the Greatsword. Those moves are Tackle, Adamant Charge Slash, and Rage Slash. Now in the Hyper Armor state, you become the immovable object. By that I mean you cannot be moved and you cannot be knocked back by incoming attacks and if you receive damage from those attacks it will be reduced damage or chip damage. Now there is more to hyper armor than just this and I will further elaborate on its uses in the video but for now I need you all to be familiar with this term because it will pop up frequently. The third and final term I would like to go over with you all is the term whiffing. Now, whiffing is a very, very special term that is not necessarily reserved for the greatsword, but very much a part of greatsword play. Now, whiffing generally talks and refers to when you're going for a big, big damaging hit, like your third slash, you charge it up to level three, you unleash it, and it just misses the monster completely or just by a little bit. There's usually a little awkward moment and internal screaming or even external screaming depending on who you are. It is a term you should be very familiar with when using the greatsword. It may or may not appear in this video, but always remember that term, the whiff and whiffing. With all the introduction stuff out of the way, let's get started with this tutorial. 
Great sword tip number one, knowing your enemy is number one. The great sword is a weapon that's entire playstyle revolves around understanding how the monster will attack you and understanding that monster AI. Even the greatest great sword players, the most efficient great sword speedrunners, will struggle against an opponent they do not know. But on the other hand, once they have learned their enemy, once they have understood this monster AI, they can utterly annihilate this monster in a matter of moments. And that's the thing about the greatsword. Initially, it can be a pretty frustrating weapon because it is not as reactionary as other weapons in Monster Hunter. It does not have those reactionary counter mechanics. It has some of them, like the tackle and hyper armor, but overall, the entire playstyle kind of revolves around this predicting the monster's movements and understanding how it attacks playstyle. But now that you are aware of this, you can be on the lookout in your fights. You won't just be going into these fights blindly trying to react to everything. Know to look out for how the monster is attacking, where it has its openings, and how you can position yourself better. This will help you progress your greatsword playstyle to become that great greatsword player. Tip number two, all about adamant charged slash. Now this whole section will be dedicated to the adamant charge slash skill, a new switch skill and a new skill added in Monster Hunter Rise. You have two options in this switch skill slot. You have the adamant charge slash and you have hunting edge. If you're using hunting edge, you are straight up memeing on your enemies. You are in the great sword fifth plane of existence and you don't need this video. Clearly everyone can learn from you. But for the rest of us, adamant charge slash is mandatory. It is an amazing addition to great sword play and I'm going to tell you all about it because it has a lot of uses and some mechanics that you may not know about. So let's get into it. Adamant Charge Slash Tip A. The Adamant Charge Slash has two varying distances, and this is key for learning how to use it for positioning correctly. So I'm going to demonstrate with Rush there in the background and me standing at this plant. So I'm gonna take out my weapon, and I'm going to use Adamant Charge Slash holding down the analog stick in the direction of Rush and see where it gets us. As you can see, we have reached Rush. We move forward a little bit, but it's not super important. The key there is that we were able to reach Rush with our attack. But what happens if I use Adamant Charge Slash and let go of the analog stick and not hold it down for the full duration? As you can see, we have done a much shorter range attack, and that is a huge huge thing to consider when using the adamant charge slash it's an amazing skill and one of the reasons is it gives you varying levels of mobility if you want to go full long range you can go all the way and fully charge that attack to close an immense gap or if you just need to do some kind of slight repositioning maybe you're facing one way but the monster is facing behind you you can just do a small attack to completely reposition and face that monster it's an amazing mobility skill and this is something you definitely want to know about it adamant charge slash tip b you can use adamant charge slash as an opener on monsters because it's mobile hyper armor it will allow you to tank the roar from the monster and dish out some major damage on top of that if you have rage slash equipped and you are experienced with the monster ai you can use adamant rage slash to adamant charge slash excuse me to position yourself so that the first hit connects with the monster before it lets out its roar then the second attack animation, which gets you into Rage Slash, will allow you to tank the roar, which follows after your hit, and unleash some devastating damage. It's an excellent opener, and this skill is very versatile. Keep this one in mind. Adamant Charge Slash Tip C. You can use the Adamant Charge Slash to close gaps between enemies and tank long-range attacks or tank incoming attacks. 
It's a pretty great skill. If you find yourself away from an opponent and they're about to unleash an attack on you, that is going to knock you out of position. And yeah, you can maybe quick sheath away from it, but instead you'd rather just get up right cross and personal and go back on the offensive. You can use adamant charge slash to just tank through the hit and position yourself right where you want to be in front of the monster. Adamant Charge Slash Tip D. The Adamant Charge Slash is also an escape move. That's right, in situations where Power Sheath will still get you knocked back from the monster and it's not really the best situation, you want to try Power Sheathing but really you're going to be in a vulnerable situation, you can use Adamant Charge Slash to slide away from the monster, tank a bit hit with Hyper Armor, so it's a bit of chip damage, but you will be safe in the process, you won't get knocked on your butt, and you won't have to waste a bunch of time taking that potion, getting your health back to optimal. You can just take some chip damage, slide away, then either use another adamant charge slash to get back in the fight, or sheath your weapon and move yourself and reposition and get back in there. Adamant charge slash tip E. You can use adamant charge slash to position yourself for wake ups. Now, this is going to be slightly different depending on whether you have rage slash or true charge slash equipped, but the same principles will apply. If you have rage slash equipped, you can use adamant charge slash to end up adjacent or parallel to the monster's weak point, either tackle out or unleash the attack right in front of them, making sure the attack won't hit, then charge up a rage slash, which of course has full. 360 attack advantage and unleash it right on their weak point for that massive wake up hit and big damage. If you have true charge slash equip, it's similar but a bit different. True charge slash doesn't have the full 360 scope of rage slash. It's more like a fan in front of your character. It's not a full 180, but close to it. So instead, while you might be able to get away with being somewhat adjacent to the monster, Instead, you want to use Adamant Charge Slash to position yourself a bit further back than optimal. Then, go into your True Charge Slash animation, either via a tackle or unleashing the Adamant Charge Slash. And then remember, you want that second hit of the True Charge Slash to connect. That is your big damage hit. The first one is not, and that first one will wake up the sleeping monster and you'll lose your bonus if that's the one that connects. Greatsword tip number three, friends that sleep monsters are friends of the greatsword. The greatsword is the OG rude awakening weapon. Because it is a weapon centered around doing fewer hits but larger chunks of damage, when that huge chunk of damage is then multiplied by the sleep damage multiplier on the weakest point to the greatsword, you are in for a treat and that monster is in for a rude rude awakening. Now, here's the thing. The greatsword itself does not benefit from sleep damage on it that much. That's because of the, the reason I kind of just went over. You're doing fewer hits, but larger damage numbers. You want to proc a status condition. You would rather be doing multiple damage hits. That's how you get the most of that status damage in and proc that status. That being said, having allies around you to put the monster to sleep, whether that is your buddies in solo hunts or your allies in multiplayer hunts, will be a great benefit to getting through the monster as efficiently as possible and kind of a staple of greatsword play. You want that sleep assist, to put it bluntly. Now, one way to achieve this in a solo hunt is to use your palamutes. If you go double Palamutes, equip them with a sleep weapon that has the highest sleep damage, and then put on the Blitz Scroll, which is currently available as of patch 2.0. That will raise your Palamutes attack speed, and they already do many ticks of damage. And so with that combined, you can get a good number of sleep procs on your monster. From personal experience, two to three, what I've gotten, but hey, maybe you're even able to get more if your Palamutes are super optimal with good skills like having attack combined with that status attack up. And maybe if you're watching this in patch 3.0 and further, there are new skills available that will allow you to proc more sleeps. It is to be noted that 
the Palamute is potentially preferred to the Palico to get off sleep procs because the Palamute will just focus on attacking with their sleep weapon instead rather than the Palico which will alternate between attacking with its weapon and also using its skills and while its skills are great they're not necessarily getting sleep damage of course you can always use a palico with the endemic life barrage in which case it'll just randomly have a chance to fire that sleep proc off on your monster but that is rng and that is up to you if you wish to choose that route great sword tip number four always be sniping those weak points now this is a tip that might seem super obvious to veteran players but for newer players and more inexperienced players with the greatsword it needs to be set a majority of your hits should be focused on the weakest point to the greatsword which you can check via your hunter's notes for a specific monster you can not only see the weakest point that the greatsword can hit but also all of the weak points available now there are exceptions to this rule there are times where maybe you choose not to go after that point because it's just not available all the time the monster has its head held up high or it's kind of hidden in the body or something maybe it's even like a turtle mechanic who knows but you can't hit it all the time so you go with the second runner up there are also situations where you might want to focus on breaking specific parts of the monster that are not necessarily its super weak points but you need to break these parts to make the fight more manageable and make it more efficient to take down this beast finally always remember that when a monster is sleeping you want to charge up that level three charge third slash and hit the monster's weakest point to the great sword you don't want to be hitting other points unless the monster is about to wake up but ideally in that situation you know what that super weak point is and that's where you unleash your ultimate attack for the ultimate rude awakening great sword tip number five hyper armor through roars your hyper armor on the great sword is a fantastic mechanic and it also not only allows you to tank hits but tank roars as well so any move that can give you hyper armor which includes rage slash adamant charge slash and on top of that your tackle move will give you hyper armor and if you time this attack correctly you will be able to just phase through a monster's roar allowing you to charge up a powerful hit and unleash it on their weak spot great sword tip number six you will lose hyper armor the moment you enter an overcharged state so while you are charging up your slash whether it's the rage slash or the adamant charge slash you have hyper armor for the first three levels of the charge the moment you get to that overcharge state you will lose your hyper armor even if you don't release the attack the moment it's in that overcharge state you're just in a regular charge and if you get hit you'll get knocked on your butt so keep that in mind great sword tip number seven don't forget your health when having hyper armor now remember hyper armor is a great mechanic that makes you the immovable object letting you hold your ground to get off the attacks that you want to use the downside is you're still taking damage even if it's chip damage and you will be especially vulnerable if you choose to put yourself in a hyper armor state where attacks do multiple takes of damage because if you're in a rage slash animation or even an adamant charge slash which allows you extended hyper armor all of those multiple ticks of damage will add up and you'll lose a lot of health and potentially faint in the process on the other hand if you've used a tackle to gain hyper armor a tackle can only give you hyper armor for one tick of damage and it wears off pretty quickly the moment it does those multiple ticks will get you and knock you out on your butt and you'll have to reset for the fight great sword tip number eight it's okay to overcharge that's right people overcharging is perfectly natural i know it doesn't get talked about a bunch but guess what we've all done it even the best great sword players have done it a few times and this is gonna sound crazy but sometimes it's okay to do it 
That's right, it's okay to overcharge. Let me explain. There are situations where even if you were to get to a level three charge and release your attack, you would still end up whiffing. Or even if you tried to reset your move to reamplify your charges and time the attack better, it still isn't gonna do it. You're only gonna get off a level one charge attack or you're still gonna end up whiffing because to tackle and then reset your charge for your level three slash or whatever slash you're doing is not worth it. It's not enough. It's too much time and you're gonna lose your opportunity. In these moments, it's okay to hold out your charge into an overcharge state so at least your attack will connect. Yes, it will only be a level two state, but remember, Doing less damage is still better than doing no damage at all. Greatsword tip number nine, anti-armor attacks. There are attacks from certain monsters that will just phase right through your hyper armor and damage you like you were just in any other regular state of animation. These attacks include Kushala's Wind Blasts, Rajang's grab attacks, Tetranodon's grab attack, and Magnum Mala's kind of biting grab attack where he launches you up into the air and the Hellfire explodes around you. If you can see a theme here, it's that most grab attacks will phase right through your hyper armor, and then in Kushala's case, it happens to be the Wind Blast. Now, these attacks are pretty scary because they can often catch you with your pants down and you can just start freaking out and panicking. You can't hyper armor adamant charge slash away from this it'll just still hit you you can't power sheet away from this it'll still gonna get you it's just too late what do you do in these situations you can guard yes that's right i said it you can guard with the greatsword you don't want to be doing it all the time it's in really really specific situations when you're just caught out in the open super vulnerable deer in a headlights position you can guard now for most veteran players, they have probably forgotten there's a guard button on the greatsword. And for newer players, they're probably super confused why it even exists. And there's a good reason. Guarding is not optimal with the greatsword. It is not a super strong guard. You are just guarding with a sword. Yeah, you don't have a shield. On top of that, a lot of attacks will just really hit through that guard and you'll lose sharpness guarding. That's very important. All attacks when you're guarding with the greatsword will cause you to lose sharpness. Powerful attacks will cause you to lose a significant amount of sharpness, which will significantly reduce your damage, make you take yourself out of the fight, resharpen, reset. It's not very efficient. However, in these specific moments where your pants are down and you are staring right into the face of death with this attack that is an anti-armor attack, it will phase right through anything you got you can just throw up a guard. It will barely damage you. It will barely reduce your sharpness and potentially it will even put you in an optimal position for a counter. That's kind of a neat thing with these super anti-armor moves. They're easily guardable. They don't hurt you that much when you throw up a guard and they don't eat up too much of your sharpness. So in these specific circumstances, you can guard. Ideally, you understand the monster AI well enough to know when this attack might initiate and just get yourself out of the way and set yourself up in a position where you can counter. But if you're not there yet, or if you just happen to be caught in a horrible situation, toss up that guard. Great sword tip number 10, you can cancel any charging animation into a tackle to then wire bug yourself to safety. Let me demonstrate. If you're on a monster and you are charging your attack and you find out all of a sudden you're in a vulnerable position, you could let go of the attack, try to then roll out or then try to wire bug out, but that might be too much time and you might end up taking a big hit. So in order to avoid this, while you're charging, you can cancel your animation by hitting A into a tackle. And the moment you tackle, you can freely use any of your wire bug skills to maneuver out of the way or even reposition yourself if you want to. Now, it's going to take some practice to get to because when you see an attack coming, you might just panic and let go of the X button to unleash the attack. 
but instead hit A, and as soon as you hit A, you can use any wire bug skill to get out of the way. You can also use this if you figure out that you need to reposition yourself because you're going for an attack, but then the monster moves behind you or something, and now you don't know what to do. Remember, you don't have to unleash that attack and lose everything. You can just tackle and use Adamant Charge Slash to reposition. Once again, a great use for Adamant Charge Slash, but also a great tip for the great sword to get you out of harm's way and get you repositioning whenever you need to. Great sword tip number 11. True charge slash will do more damage than your other two slash attacks combined. Let me demonstrate and show you exactly what I mean. Now, the first two attacks in my combo, if I fully charge them, you see it does 623 damage, followed by 682 damage. Now, if I use a true charge slash, 1,567 damage, right? Even if I combined those two other numbers, they still do not equate to that 1,500 damage you just saw. Remember this if you decide to throw on True Charge Slash and that's going to be your playing style. It is that important to know because while you're fighting a monster, you are going to need to understand its mechanics so you can get off those True Charge Slashes and deal the most possible damage. Great sword tip number 12, maximizing DPS during openings. Now, the term DPS stands for damage per second. You can also use the term DPM, damage per minute. It does not matter. When I use the phrase maximizing DPS during openings, what I am trying to get at is during a fight when the monster is vulnerable, whether that is after certain attacks or during certain attacks, if you position yourself accordingly, how can you figure out how to get the most damage in during those openings? It is something that you will be constantly chasing throughout your greatsword career and something that is much, much more easily said than done, but it does need to be said because you don't want to be doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results. You can only whiff during an opening so many times before you need to take a step back and realize, hey, it's not the game. I am the one that needs to adapt my play style. So with that being said, let me give you some pointers of how to go about figuring this out. Number one is that your third slash fully charged will do the most damage out of any of your moves, any of your combos, right? So that means a level three charge rage slash, a level three charge true charge slash will do the most damage out of your moves. And ideally you want to be getting off a significant number of these attacks on your opponent during the fight. At the same time, not every opening allows you to get off these attacks. And if you just automatically animation cancel, right? Do just a bunch of tackles to get to this attack every single time there's an opening and try to get a hit in, you might end up whiffing a majority of the time. In those situations, you would have been better off using either a first slash, a second slash, or even another variant of the attacks in your combos to be doing damage to the enemy because remember and this is super important it is better to do less damage than no damage at all great sword tip number 13 all about the rage slash so rage slash is another new attack added into monster hunter rise it is a switch skill that you can swap out true charge slash for what rage slash offers is full hyper armor during the first three levels of the charge. It has a full 360 degree attack range once you let go of the attack. And if you get hit while you're charging up, your attack will do increased damage. And it is to note that it does not do as much damage as a true charge slash even when you get hit. So there, it's not completely perfect. Now, let's get into all the tips and tricks about it. 
Rage Slash Tip A. You can be hit the moment you release the attack. Now, that does need to be said, although a lot of you who have used the Rage Slash might have experienced this. But for those who have not and are questioning why they keep getting knocked on their butt every time they go for a Rage Slash when it says it's supposed to have Hyper Armor, that is because the Rage Slash will give you Hyper Armor for the first three levels of the charge the moment you release the attack or the moment you enter the overcharged state you lose that hyper armor rage slash tip b the rage slash has a delayed hit and an extended hitbox now if you don't know what i'm talking about this is basically for all those people that are tired of whiffing with their greatsword attacks the rage slash kind of has something going for you when you unleash a Rage Slash attack, there is a brief moment where your sword is on the ground and it might look like you whiffed. You never connected your hit with the monster. But something crazy is going to happen. The attack hit can last for a few seconds after the swing has hit the ground and the hitbox is extended slightly in front of where your sword is. So even if it looks like you whipped, let's say you were trying to hit the back of this monster and it didn't connect, your sword is just on the ground, you have that awkward moment where you're about to just start shouting and throwing controllers everywhere. Then all of a sudden the monster turns around and you see a big old smack, damage numbers pop up and it's a crit too, it's hit on a weak spot. What's going on? This is something with the Rage Slash. I don't know if this was intended to be part of the attack or just a happy coincidence, but yes, the Rage Slash will hit slightly out in front of where it lands, so you do have a bit of an extended reach, and the hit is slightly delayed too, so you do have time if the monster moves a bit, it will still connect with the target. It's pretty neat. Rage Slash Tip C you can reset your charges to bait out an attack. Rage Slash is a really nice move because it has that hyper armor while you are charging. There are several instances where you can reset the attack to regain hyper armor and just bait out an attack or reset your timer to get off an attack at the exact moment you needed to. Let me explain. So when you are in your Rage Slash animation, if you find that the monster will not be at your position for an extended period of time or that by the time you get to your third level of charge and you release your attack, the monster will still be in an attack animation and damage you, you can simply tackle to then animation cancel, go back into a charged attack, and it will still be a rage slash. And you can do this multiple times times, allowing you to reset that Rage Slash, reset your Hyper Armor timer essentially, and get off your fully charged Rage Slash exactly when you need to. Great Sword tip number 14, you can delay your attacks between slashes to help you with your timing. So once a slash has connected with the ground, whether it's your first slash or your second slash there is a bit of delay that you can have before you get into your next slash attack it only works for the first two it does not work for the third the third will have you just be delayed on the ground you'll have to either roll out of the way or just wait it out and then you might have to wire bug really though you want to roll and get back into the fight as soon as possible but with your first two slash attacks you don't have to go into your next animation right away if you don't want to. There is a bit of wiggle room where you can just be in that state where the sword is on the ground. You're kind of just chilling there and then you can hit the input for another charge slash animation and you'll go to it. It gives you some time to adjust and be prepared for how a monster will react. It's a nice little thing that you will learn to master the more you play the greatsword. Greatsword tip number 15, learn to reset the fight and don't rush. There are moments when you are playing the greatsword and the monster is getting knocked down back 
and fourth, getting smacked around left and right, and you are just doing an absurd amount of damage, getting in lots of hits with huge damage numbers. Then all of a sudden, it stops. The monster has either backed off or you have gotten smacked really hard, and that momentum has just died down completely. In these moments, it is very easy to just get caught up on that hype and try to rush back into the fight. But that is a recipe for disaster. You will most likely just get knocked on your butt really hard multiple times, and all of that good you had done before kind of just gets washed out completely. It is very important after this happens, after that momentum has died down, to take a step back, put away the weapon sometimes. Yes, that's right, you can put it away and reset the fight. Do what you need to do. If you need to resharpen, resharpen, you need to pop more of those demon drugs, the powders, the seeds, go and do that. Read the monster's attacks, get ready for that opening, and get right back in there to dish out the damage and build up that momentum yet again. Great sword tip number 16. Put away your weapon and move. That's right, people. Don't be the guy or gal that always has the greatsword out lumbering around trying to close the gap on a monster when you're moving at a snail's pace. Even though Monster Hunter Rise has added so much mobility to the greatsword, when you have that weapon out, you still move like a turtle. And so because of that, there's going to be a lot of times where that monster is just in such a weird position or just very far away from you and you got to put away the weapon. You got to put away the weapon. You got to move, reset the fight, like I said in the last tip, get back into the optimal position and then go back on the offensive. Great sword tip number 17, keep that weapon sharpness up. The greatsword will do less ticks of damage relative to other weapons in Monster Hunter, and because of this, weapon sharpness decreases a lot slower compared to other weapons. However, because the greatsword relies on these fewer number of hits, every hit dealing the most damage is very important. So when you lose a tier of sharpness, this can significantly impact how much damage overall you end up doing in the fight from that point on. In these moments, it is important to find an opportunity to reset that sharpness. And it is also why the skill speed sharpening, a level three speed sharpening, is quite important on a greatsword. Now, as for when you can get these moments in, the idealist moment is probably when the monster is in a rideable state. You have a really great opportunity to just sharpen up real quickly. The monster is just gonna stay put right there waiting for you to sharpen. Then once you're done, you can just get right back into the fight. However, if you cannot do this or you don't feel like waiting, a opening that a monster gives you, rather than using it to dish out damage, you can use it to resharpen the weapon. You will sacrifice damage in that moment, but you will be able to do more damage overall during the fight, speeding up that fight. Greatsword tip number 18, the greatsword plays differently in multiplayer. The greatsword is a weapon that vastly benefits from the monster targeting you, one because you can better predict its attacks, and two because the monster will stay in closer proximity to your character. This changes in multiplayer. The monster will now change targets between four different characters. And even though you might understand monster attacks to know when it leaves an opening, because the monster is moving back and forth between those four characters and the greatsword is a relatively slow weapon still, it might be very difficult or just straight up infuriating in order to set yourself up for big damage on these opponents, but that's okay. Multiplayer is a different beast altogether, but with time, patience, and practice, you will get both playstyles down. You'll be great with the greatsword and multiplayer, and great with the greatsword in solo. Greatsword final tip, don't get frustrated. I know that one is probably the most difficult out of all of them, but it's okay. The greatsword takes a lot of practice and you really need to know your enemy. 
You will not do well if you do not understand how the monster is going to fight you. The weapon is designed to be very slow and immobile, even though it's gotten a lot of boosts in Monster Hunter Rise. It is still that weapon, and because of this, it requires some prediction. It requires understanding of what the monster is going to do next. So it's okay. It will take time and practice to get down, but once you do, it will be very rewarding, and you will be able to get off some amazing hits on your enemy, destroy them in a short period of time, and look super cool doing it. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I hope you found the information provided useful, and I wish you all the best in your greatsword gameplay, and that you will all become that great greatsword player. Now, if you have any questions about anything you saw in the video or just general questions at all, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I will try to get to them. On top of that, if you liked the video, please be sure to like this video and to subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.